We're going live. So I'd like to welcome everybody this week to Inspired by Free Spirit Fabrics. Um, sorry, we're running a few minutes late. I've been having some technical difficulties in terms of the spotlight video. I'm gonna to wait to see if the team alerts me to let me know that all is good. We are here this week with June Taylor. Uh, Jill Rep is here. She's going to bring us through some wonderful projects that they've made and designed using Tim Holtz fabrics. His fabrics are called Christmas time. And for many makers and sewers, this is the time that we all start gearing up for Christmas. So, uh, you know, Christmas in July. So here we are with Christmas in July. And we are looking forward to sharing all of these projects with you. I'm just waiting for someone on my team to let me know that we're live. So if somebody could let me know, that would be great. Um, so we welcome you with the, oh, they just see you, Jill. <laughs> so they just see you. <laughs> so Jill, welcome to uh, Free Spirit Fabrics. So like oh, thank you, I'm happy problems to Problems with the spotlight video this week. Um, so Jill is here this week. It, Jill, you look great. So I'm glad that they can all see you. Thank you. Uh, she's here with June Taylor and uh, Sarah just came in. So everybody just sees Jill? Yes. Okay. So everybody's just seeing Jill. So go so ahead and mute Jill. Yeah, Jill, you look great. So stay, stay <laughs> here with me. So um, anyway, so we've got uh, Tim Holtz. Uh, Jill's gonna be sharing a lot of Tim Holtz projects with us this week. And uh, Tim is going to be shipping or is shipping to quilt shops right now. And this collection that we're showing is a total of 16 SKUs and or designs that they will be sharing with us. And we can talk through it as we go. And maybe I'll figure out the spotlight video, Jill, along the way. So and if you do, just interrupt so that we can look at that gorgeous quilt behind you. Well, I know. I'd like, I'd like to show it. So thank you for doing that. So welcome, Jill. And uh, thank you for bearing with us. <laughs> no problem. It's always fun to do this show. And it's finally warm in Wisconsin, like really warm. And we were sewing up a Christmas storm here. So it's actually perfect. I love Christmas in July because it gives us something really nice to look forward to. And we can get going on some holiday projects ahead of time and get in a little bit of the Christmas spirit, right? Right, exactly. I mean, we're here in 95 degree weather here in Charlotte, so it does not feel like Christmas. <laughs> right. We're, we're a little, I don't know, maybe 75, 80 degrees here in Wisconsin, but it's actually, actually pretty gorgeous right now. And so today we thought we'd talk about some fun projects for the holidays. And we have a beautiful Christmas tree skirt that we're going to show you how to make quilt as you go style, which means you actually piece it and quilt it all at the same time. Um, we're going to feature um, our stockings so you can get going on some Christmas stockings, uh, some placemats that all have matching table runners. And then toward the end, we're gonna be introducing our brand new quilters project bags. And these are really cool if you wanna put all your things for one project in one place. And they come as a twin pack and we're going to walk through all the steps on how you can make those for yourself. So we've got a lot to go over. Yes, we're very excited to see all that you've been working on. Should we change over to the overhead view so we can get get started? That sounds perfect. Oh, so, we, can see, we can see your hands. So that's good. All this gorgeous fabric. You know, I've said it once. I've probably said it 10 times. The happiest day for us is the day that this box of fabrics arrives at June Taylor and we look at all these fabrics and then we say, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do with them? They're just gorgeous. So you're going to see us using all of these in the projects that we're going to go through today. Um, but a couple of things that I just wanted to highlight is this, this red is absolutely fantastic, this damask. And it's great if you fussy cut it. It's great used as binding. We also found some really fun uses um, for the musical, the musical notes and the musical sheets. And then just one other I wanted to highlight was this is a great fabric. Let's do it the right way. This is a great fabric to fussy cut. And we're going to show you some of the ideas that we had with this as well. But let's start out with our tree skirt. And let me show you a little bit um, of how this, how this works. 
but this is a tree skirt that's done quilt as you go style. It consists of 16 of these segments. And we're basically going to start out, and I'll go through a lot of detail, but we're going to start out by putting a backing fabric on, which is this Tim Holtz. We love this plaid because it, kind of, it makes the tree skirt reversible. So you can have it like this one day, and then maybe you want to change it up and do this one day. Um, and we're going to go through all the steps of making this. But think in terms of it's not just for Christmas. We have so many people using the same tree skirt pattern for their picnic tables this time of year. Say you have a center umbrella that goes here. Oh, and, um, great so idea. You, use, you know, summer prints and have a great picnic table cover. If you do a Halloween tree, you can put this, you know, around the edge of the tree. So mm -hmm. it's really a really versatile um, type of project. But to begin with, um, I'm just going to pass this off. I'll show Bill, you what you did. Yes. It sounds like the volume's gone down a little bit for you. I don't know. That's oh, okay. Um, well, let's see what we can do here. Um, so we're going to, let's see if we can. Is this any better if I speak like this? Yes. I, I guess just keep going. And if anybody can't hear you, but it sounded like a change. So that's why I said something. Yeah. Okay, great. I will just speak okay. a little bit louder. So this is um, how our tree skirt skirt started out. This is one half, and then here is the other half. Uh, our our area, our camera area, isn't big enough to show you the whole entire thing. But this sixteen segment pattern is actually printed right on the batting, and you get that in your kit, and you also get this template. And this template is made out of plastic. And it has lines on it every two and a half inches. And we use this template to cut these segments of fabric that we're gonna eventually sew together. So to prepare our fabrics, the first thing we're gonna to do to make our segments is we're gonna need an 18 inch piece of fabric. And I've got something like that right here. This is one of his collection that we really, really love. Isn't that gorgeous? And what we always like to do is starch our fabrics. We have a product called Starch Savvy. It's a man-made product. So there's no potato or corn. And we like to spritz it on and starch our fabrics so they're nice and stiff. And we do that because as we're sewing on the batting, uh, we can't use an iron to press because an iron on the batting will shrink it. So we finger press or we use a seam wand, a wooden seam wand to press. So you wanna make sure that your fabrics are starched. And if you starch before you cut, it also makes it quite honestly easier to cut. So um, each application of starch makes it a little bit stiffer. Then what you're going to do to cut your segments is put your template over the top and you're gonna use a marking pen and you're simply going to mark on here and then cut out. And you can use a rotary cutter once you've got a line there or you can use a scissors. To economize on the fabric, you're going to flip it up in this direction, line it right back up on the line you cut, and mark again. And you're just going to keep flipping back and forth until you have your 16 segments cut. All right? Now, for today's project, we are going to use this fabric and one of his green fabrics. So this would be like how one of our segments would look when it's cut. Now, if you like to do something that's even a little bit more interesting, you can take all of Tim's gorgeous fabrics like you see here. These are all two and a half inch strips and we've sewn them all together. So in essence, we've created our own piece of fabric out of his fabric using these two and a half inch strips. And then what you can do is you can take your template and lay it over the top and then do your marking and cutting. And the great thing about this template is everywhere you see a black line will line up with one of your seams. So you can always keep things perfectly straight. So you would again, mark and cut, flip the template over, mark and cut, flip it again. And let's see what that would look like. So this is your segment now. It looks a little bit like this. That looks awesome. That gives you a completely different um, idea of how you can combine these templates or combine these segments. You can also do one other thing that's really kind of interesting with your two and a half inch strips. 
is you can take this template and you can basically turn it slightly so that the easiest way for me to explain this is you're gonna follow one of the lines on the template. And on one side of the line, you're gonna be on the bottom of your strip. We're using this black strip right here. And if I follow the line all the way over, it's at the top of the strip. That's how to figure out your angle. So the same black line on the top of the strip matches with the same black line on the bottom of the strip. And what you'll notice if you go over to the side is every single time you look at that black line, it's lined up with your strip. So let me show you what that looks like. It has kind of an angled strip, which looks like this. And if you put two of those together, look what happens. Oh. The tree skirt now so has this so chevron effect. And of course that would continue to go all the way around. So there's the straight up and down, or there's the angle with the chevron. Or for our project today, we're just gonna use the solid pieces of fabric because I think it'll be a little bit easier to understand. And again, wow. these were starched and then cut in the two and a half inch strips, sewn together, and then you kind of have your, your fabric. We'll come back to these in a little bit and show you how they can be mixed in. Well, that, those are some great tips. Thank you for sharing that with us. And then what we're going to do is we are going to apply our backing. Um, we're going to apply our backing to our, our quilt as you go batting. So essentially you're taking your backing fabric and you are attaching it to the batting. You can use um, quilt basting spray, which is the spray that we have that you spray onto the batting and then you smooth the backing over the top or you can also use our fabric glue stick. This is fun, fun stuff. It is a purple glue and you basically, I'm gonna use it for our first step. You basically make a line or you know, kind of outline something and your fabric will stick to the batting. It shows in purple, but then it actually turns clear and it washes out. So this is, this is a great little notion item to have. So once you have your backing on your tree skirt, we're then going to turn it over to the front and we're going to start the process of adding our segments. The batting is numbered one through 16. So what we're going to do is, I'll just give you a quick example of how we would start. Um, in fact, why don't I just do one quick one for you. You would start by putting a little bit of the glue on and laying your segment down like that. You know what? I totally forgot something. I totally forgot to say something. Um, That's when all right. We had, when we had our backing down, we uh -huh. want to sew in the dotted line just to secure oh. that backing one more time. So right. on our batting, dotted lines usually mean sewing lines. So you're going to sew in that complete circle all the way around. And you will also have you sew um, at the beginning and the end, which we're going to eventually cut open to allow us to get that around our tree. Oh, so okay. Piece number one will we'll actually glue down. And then uh -huh. we want to take piece number two, and we're going to go right sides together and raw edges even like this. And we're going to sew in a quarter of an inch all the way along here. So the line, when you line these two up, they'll be right on this placement line that you see on the batting. So the lines are always for placing, not for sewing. You'll mm -hmm. always still be sewing in that quarter inch seam allowance. So when I sew like that and flip it open, it's going to land right on my next placement line. That's now we perfect. have that done for you on the other side, just so that you can kind of see where we were at here. So We'll do one more quick kind of a redo of what I just did to show you. We put our glue stick down. You can do some wavy lines like this. Piece number one goes down and that just kind of helps secure it. And then piece number two, we laid against piece number one, lined it up on the placement line. We sewed in a quarter of an inch and then flipped it open. Now, when you flip it open after it's sewn, you're gonna to wanna to finger press this. And that's where the starch really comes in handy because you can finger press much more easily if your fabrics are stiffer. You can also use our magic seam wand. This is 
I think we've had this on the show before. It's wood and you can take this angled edge and really get that nice and flat seam in there. The other thing you can do is you can put this edge up to an iron if you want, put it up to a hot iron. It'll absorb the heat of the iron and this will stay hot and then you can get even a crisper seam. So you're gonna wanna press your seam allowances open either with your finger or something like this. And then we're gonna continue on with the next piece. So that would be piece three. Do we have another, oh, you know what? Piece three is here, let's grab that. And- Phil, we'll I have a quick question for you. Yes. Um, is the glue in terms of ironing, is it all fine? Like if we were to take a hot iron to the fabric instead of the pressing block, could you bring an iron to the glue and it'll be fine? Yes, you can. Okay, great. And, and the, the, the purple color disappears and eventually uh, it it'll, it'll dry clear. I'm getting, I'm getting some help from our Tessa here, our graduate <laughs> of NC State. Uh, dries clear and it does not gum your needle. Okay, great. So that's really, really nice. Those are important tips for us all. I love the no gumming of the needle. That's important. Mm -hmm. So we thought it might be nice to show you, I'm just gonna lay this on here for now because this process continues all the way around where you're always doing right sides together, raw edges even, stitching and then flipping. But we thought it might be nice to show you instead what it might look like if you intermingled some of these oh. other pieces. So uh -huh. here we've got a couple of the straight pieces that you could bring in. So mm -hmm. you can kind of mix and match or you know you can even bring in the angled pieces and that gives you a completely different look. Wow. So it's all in what is your personal taste and mm -hmm. you can do every other one or every few just depends on what you like. And again wow. with this this chevron one it's really kind of it's kind of neat because you can also have it matching up perfectly to kind of give you that chevron look all the way around your quilt. Right, and it's very nice. You, I think it really brought these fabrics to life in a, in a way that we were so happy with. We thought it looked so pretty when we got it done because he does a great job in his collections of mixing wonderful plaids. I mean, can, can you imagine like going to a fabric store, just the way he's got this organized, it just sewed up beautifully. The scales were so different from one another. Mm -hmm. that plaids and busy prints, and then you have this real detail in the music. It was just right. perfect. We yes. needed that light color in here. Right. All right, so one would go on continuing on, and we would be sewing um, right sides together in a quarter inch, flipping open and pressing until we get all the way around the edge of our tree skirt. And I will show you what that looks like. So now we have it completely pieced and it's time Beautiful. for binding. So we're gonna lay this all out so you can kind of see what that looks like. And then we're going to be cutting our bias binding. And we use bias binding because we're going over a rounded area here. And then of course, all the way around the periphery. And we loved, this is where we just love using this red because it has a little bit of cream in it. And that really just dovetailed nicely with all the other colors. So you make your bias binding. So it, bias means it has a little bit of a stretch to it, but you're going to start at one side of that small round inner hole, right sides together. And you're just gonna bring your binding down and sew in a quarter of an inch. And we're gonna go all the way around the periphery of our skirt down here. And then I'll kind of showcase how this would go all the way around the edge. Mm -hmm. and then we're gonna end up on this side. So this side will look like this, we'll end up here. And then we're gonna trim this tail. So it'll kind of look like this. Right. The inner the fabrics circle, look really pretty together. You guys did a nice great. job. We, we love them. Then you're going to take a second piece of binding and we're going to go all the way around this inner circle, leaving two long tabs to actually make the tie. So you, you actually end up leaving a tab like this and then bringing it around the circle and leaving another tab. And I've got that done here so I can show it to you. So this is what it looks like when it's done. So we've got the binding on. Very nice. And we left some nice long ties here because 
we must think our tree trunk's going to be pretty big. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> so, it's just ties in a bow like this. And yeah. I would say if you are using this for a picnic table, you wouldn't need to have the ties quite as long. Right. But what's great about it is as you are doing your piecing on the front, you're quilting. So it's already done on the back. Right. And makes for, I just want to show this whole side because I actually love this side. I think that sometimes it's nice with, once you get all the gifts under the tree, sometimes you don't want it to be so busy. So it's nice to have this. And we just thought this plaid was perfect. We used it in a lot of our projects, which you're going to see coming up. Very nice. So that is our quilt as you go tree skirt. And now since we have that, we needed to have our matching stockings. So here is our printed batting for the stocking. And this is our two and a half inch strip stocking. So there's the one side and then of course the reverse side. And what you're going to do with this is you're gonna cut your two and a half inch strips and we're gonna use the same process. Strip one goes here and then two, three, four, five and you're continuing to work out. And then when you're done, you're just gonna simply sew right sides together and bind. What, what was, would be really interesting we were thinking is when your stockings are done it would be nice if you made them all out of the same fabrics but change the order around so they'd all coordinate but they'd all look a little different so oh, yeah. you know yours might have the red piece here and maybe i don't know dad has the red piece down here and it it would be such a pretty picture we actually used up all the fabric that we kind of ran out but we thought it would be fun to make like six of these and just you know really kind of rearrange those so this is our two and a half inch strip stocking. This sews up in about an hour. It's so super easy to make and then just bound at the top and then you put a little loop in. And then the other design that we have looks more like an Argyle stocking. So the printed batting oh. like this and oh. you start out with actual squares. So you're, you're cutting five inch squares and then you're putting your piece one, two and three trim around the edge. And that's what this looks like. Mm -hmm. so we thought it was nice to kind of put this fabric in the center, the let it snow fabric, because it really, it really set it off nicely. And of course, this houndstooth, it just works with everything. So yes, the fabrics are the beautiful together. Jill, you, you ladies are inspiring me to get going on some stockings. Yeah, if you think <laughs> about it, you make one a day or one in an evening, you'll have them done in no time. I, right. we, we actually at June Taylor, we make these all the time and we put quilting things in here. Like we put our starch in here as a gift or mm -hmm. we roll up fabric and put those. And so your stocking actually becomes your gift wrap. Yes. So it's a very cute way to hand someone a gift or, you know, like in May day, only at Christmas time, you hang this on their door and all their prizes are on the inside. And really ah. you, can, uh, you can use your scraps left over from a bigger project to make these stockings. So not only for hanging up on a mantle, but also for gift giving. So Jill, there's a question on, is there a lining in the stocking? So you got- oh, yes, there is. is. In fact, let's, um, the lining in the stocking we used was that beautiful music note fabric. Mm -hmm. um, so let me just back up and say the process is the same. You cut your stocking out of the batting and you attach the back lining first and then you do your quilt as you go and sew mm -hmm. the two together so yes they are fully lined that's great yeah thank you so you can actually these can actually hold a lot if you really use them i mean you can put heavy things in here that's nice i'm and gonna get going we, i'm gonna get going jill you guys have inspired me <laughs> <laughs> we always think about um we do here at june taylor there's always there's always eating going on at holiday time, right? And so right. we thought it would be fun to use some of his fabrics to make placemats. And this placemat design is our Venice design. And we've used this before on your show, but of course with Tim's fabrics, they look completely different. And this section is all two and a half inch strips. So you'd start out by putting your lining fabric on the back, and then you'd be piecing one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up here. And then you add in inch strips along here, two and a half inch here. And then this is actually a flat pocket. And let me show you what it looks like when it's done. So here is that gorgeous placemat um, using that kind of braided area here. You can see we fussy cut one of the prints to show the word joy here. 
-hmm. So it's nice to really have this area being something you really think through of how you're going to lay out those fabrics. And then of course the black hounds too just sets it off and the beautiful snowflakes here. And then we love this fabric and we put 25 right here. Oh yeah. The the way that the way you sew this up, it forms a little pocket for your cutlery, or you could put a napkin here. Or if you're using this pattern at summertime and you're eating outside and it's windy, you can have all your, your napkin and your cutlery in here and it's not going to blow away. Mm -hmm. And the one fabric we love, you're going to see a right, this is actually, the fabric is printed on an angle already. So this is straight of grain binding. It's just cut straight strips, but it gives you that angled or mitered look. It's built right into the fabric. So we love that. So this is our Venice design. And of course, you make it out of bright prints and you have a springy look, you make it out of this and it says Christmas, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I love and how then This is the same grouping of fabrics made um, out of our Casablanca design. And again, this is the printed batting, all sew by number, all quilt as you go. And I think the, the inspiration for this one is that this center square is cut on point and we loved how that just really set off this block. You know, mm -hmm. with, this, with the, the word wish right here and the 25th right here. And there's a lot of blue in this fabric. So the snowflakes look just great around the edge. And then these are just two inch strips that you build out by number. And we use the same binding on here because we really liked it. And then so if you know, Jill. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. We have a question on where would, um, if people were interested in purchasing these products, Will they find them at their local quilt shop? Yes, their local quilt shop. And um, you can always call us and we can tell you what quilt shops carry it. But um, they're very wide. The placements have been on the market for a long time. So they're widely available at independent quilt shops. Okay. And there's, you know, there's other uh, websites too that carry the quilt as you go batting. Okay. Um, just just to give you an idea, we have over 200 products that utilize this printed batting, the sew by number. So it's very popular, not only placemats and table runners, but tote bags and handbags and quilts, we can all do using this method. And it's wonderful if you're teaching somebody how to quilt, or maybe you're uh, teaching a grandchild how to sew, it's a very easy beginner level project because they can literally use their glue stick and glue down the first piece and then just sew them with that quarter inch seam allowance. And guess what? It's very forgiving. It always looks great, right? Right, right. Such a nice look to it. Love a project like that. <laughs> this is our last table runner. This one's called Jakarta. Jakarta it consists of all two and a half inch strips. Mm -hmm. So if you've got extra strips over, it's perfect for this. You start in the center and you work out toward the edge and then you add your strips. And again, this is all printed right on the batting. Mm -hmm. Again, focused on his, his believe. And then this is the word wish right here. So we liked that and started out. Uh, yeah, and we're also from Wisconsin. So we thought maybe it was believe in Wisconsin because that's our <laughs> state. Um, I love that. But um there's something again about having this, these snowflakes next to this blue. We just thought it looked so pretty. And when we first got the fabrics, I couldn't imagine how this black houndstooth was going to fit in, but doesn't it just look great? I mean, it, it just does. In. Let's bring the other two back just so you can see them one more time, all three together. So kind of crazy, three completely different looks for placemats. And they all look great. These place mats, they come six to a pack. So you get six different pieces of printed batting and then you add your fabrics. But people often think there's only four, but we actually put six in because that way, you know, it gives you a lot of variety. And we always feel, especially at holiday time, you're having more people over for dinner. So having the six pack is really nice. So Jill, the six, the six pack has two of each one of those designs. Is that correct? It has six of this design. Six oh, okay. This design. Let's get a piece of the batting to show you. Can you just grab one for me? Thank you so much. So for example, this is what it would look like when you get it. It's, um, I'll try to open this up for you. So you would actually get all six, six of the same design. Gotcha. Okay, that's awesome. But yes, you can buy all three and then you could really do some mixing. That's what I was going to say. You could really mix you know, it up. 
sometimes it looks nice to have your table set with lots of variety and these mm -hmm. sure do offer you that. So we've kind of gone through um, some holiday decor such as our tree skirt and our stockings. And this is another brand new product for June Taylor. These are our project bags. And nice. these are actually brand new. We just started shipping them this week. And what so they are is- Are you showcasing them with us for the very first time? I believe so. I mean, we started shipping them. I haven't seen them out anywhere at all. So this could be it, right? Wow, well, this is yeah. awesome. Thank you. Um, but these project bags, our initial idea for them was for a quilter or a sewer to keep everything they needed for one project in one bag. So for example, this project bag has my fabric, my rulers, my cutting, my threads that are gonna match the tape measure. So I'm ready to work on this project. Even if I'm not home, grab this bag and away I go. Mm -hmm. So each of these kits um, contains enough to make two project bags. That's One nice. ends up being 16 by 16 inches. And this is the front side, but look how pretty the back is. Very nice. And then the second one that comes in the kit is 18 by 18 inches. So quite a bit bigger because for a quilter, you might want to put your blocks in here when they're under construction. Mm -hmm. And then maybe when you get your quilt and you want to fold it up until you can get, you know, the batting to it. But this is what this one looks like on the back. Very nice. Now, we wanted to showcase all things Christmas. So maybe, you know, these would be a, a really fun idea to put your Christmas cards in or your lists in or all the things that you're gathering together to um, plan a Christmas party, but they are designed to hold, you know, your either maybe you you like to knit, you could have your yarn in here or your floss if you like to cross stitch, but they're just nice sizable bags and they have this clear pocket in. So it's really easy for you to see, oh yeah, this is my bag for, you know, my stocking and this is my bag for this. So I'm going to I'm going to bring these back up, but I want to show you what you get in each kit and then we'll come back to these. So you start out by getting um, before we were working with printed batting. This is actually a different type of substrate. And this is a really strong uh, non woven material that's going to um, give some, some good body to our project bags and you're going to get both sizes in one package. So the smaller one is the, um, the 16 inch and the larger one is the 18 inch. So we're going to do a little quilt as you go and I'm going to show you how that works. And then up here, these are the tops that we're going to need to quilt for both of them. You will also get, and this is maybe hard for you to see, you'll get two pieces of 12 mil plastic. And this plastic, it, it'll work great in your sewing machine. We actually have tissue paper with it. And oh, this nice. tissue paper goes on the bottom so that when mm -hmm. you're sewing, your feed dogs um, move nice and smoothly. So you'll get two project bags, two pieces of plastic, and then you're also going to get two of our matching zippity do done zippers. You're going to see one is a little bit bigger than the other. So this one is for the 16 inch bag. This one's for the 18 inch bag. Now this is a zipper that is basically sewn into a casing. So the zippers already sewn into this casing. The hard work is already done. And let me just open this up for you to see. So this is like a casing in here and your project is gonna slide right in here. And then we're just gonna stitch along this edge and our zipper will be inserted. That's why we call it zippity do done because it's already done. And if you yes. can sew a straight line on the edge, you're gonna have your project done in no time. Mm -hmm. Love that, Jill. You know, I'm a huge oh. fan of that. I know you are. And a lot of people don't have a zipper foot and they get, you know, they get a little intimidated by putting a zipper in. So we felt like we needed to do the work for you. Another mm -hmm. great thing kids can do because it's, it's super easy. So we're going to kind of walk through the steps on both of these and show you how we make these. So let's start out with, um, this is our project bag here. And we're going to be cutting all our fabrics out according to the numbers. We tell you exactly what size to cut. And we have, of course have our backing fabric, just like the placemats and the tree skirt. And what we're gonna do 
So we're gonna put our backing fabric onto our substrate. And again, if you have this glue pan, it's super easy. You can just make some marks around here like this. You can see the purple. And then we're gonna turn this over so it's wrong sides together and smooth it out. How easy is that? Now our backing fabric is already attached. And lucky me, I did it in the right direction because I kind of forgot that there's letters here and there's numbers here. So right. hopefully I did it in the right direction. Then we're gonna take piece number one, which happens to be this square right here. And mm -hmm. let's put a little glue on here so that this kind of stays in place. And again, don't worry because the glue is going to dry clear and we're going to position that in place. Okay. Now I'm going to take piece one, which is, this is a fabric that we didn't use a lot in the other designs, but isn't that pretty with that silver snowflake? It and is. We're going to put it against piece one, right sides together and raw edges even, right on the placement line. But again, we sew in a quarter of an inch away from the edge when we flip that open that's gonna land here. And then you're gonna use your pressing wand to press the seam open. So you would be taking that wand and pressing it open. And then I'll just lay these out for you. We would add um, piece three and four and five, and you can kind of see how we're building this block. And as we sew on the front, um, our quilting will automatically be done. And then we'll do the, our next edges here and continue on. We've got that sewn up for you so that you can see what it looks like. So here's the back and here, actually, I take that back. This is the back, but it also ends up being the lining for the bag. Right. And then right. here's the front all sewn together. Very and nice. And we wanted to you know, use the, the words and the letters of his great fabric to do that. Our next step is to make the part that has the plastic. And this consists of um, a piece of the substrate that comes in your kit, two pieces of fabric that you just sandwich between, and then you stitch along here to just quilt it to kind of hold this together. So we use the musical note fabric on both sides, and we did our quilting right along the sheet music because that line existed for us. So that's where we just did our little quilting. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your musical note fabric and your plastic base. And we're gonna join these two with zippity do done. This happens to be a black zippity before I showed you a red. Mm -hmm. Zippity comes in black, white, navy blue, red, camel, and gray. So it comes in six colors and several sizes, um, but we put the exact sizes that you're gonna need in the kit. What you do is you open up the casing and you simply put your little quilt top here, your little quilt sandwich, right inside the casing, and you stitch all along this top edge. So just a straight stitch on this top edge. If you want to use your glue stick and glue it in place, you can, and you just stitch right along here. Mm -hmm. And then when you're done with that, you would slide your plastic in like this and stitch along here. So now I've got my front area of the project bag done. And that looks like this. Wow. Turn it over great. to the front. So this is the clear plastic. I don't know if you can see that very well. And this is my zipper pull right here. Uh -huh. Now, if you want, this casing on Zippity is kind of gives you an opportunity to do something fun. Like you can put a machine stitch along here or you might want to add some other fabric accents. And those we would just simply cut out, press under, and stitch on using a straight stitch. Mm -hmm. Now that it just gives it a completely different look. It adds a little bit more detail. So you can do, again, machine stitches. You could add grow grain ribbon. We love this fabric, so we just added that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to layer wrong sides together. So remember, this was the lining fabric. This is my quilt as you go. And we're going to lay my lining fabric or the wrong side to the wrong side, wrong sides together for this project bag. Um, so again, my zipper top is here. My pieced, 
art is back here. Mm -hmm. And all we're going to do is bind. It's that wow. simple. Because my zippers are already sewn in, I'm going to simply add my binding on here and I will, I will be done. Wow. So let's show you the finished one one more time because we've got that done. And that looks like that looks like this. Wow. You and know, that is. would make He's a great that. gift, uh, you know, at Christmas as is even to a quilty friend. You know what I mean? To just give them. I think all our all our gifts this year should be in something. They should be in a project bag, or they should be in a stocking. I agree. I totally agree. Right, but yes. you know, people love using these for travel. You know, you can put your lingerie in these. You can put makeup in these things uh -huh. that you can see. So we call them project bags for quilters, but you could really use them for anything. Mm -hmm. Those are awesome, and I could also see. Um, Quilters that do English paper piecing, they could use that very easily and travel with that if they made oh, it. Oh, yes, because there you've got all those pieces and you need to keep them all organized. Right, exactly. So it's a nice bag to just make up something pretty and carry all of your necessary elements with you. So this is the 18-inch bag, Sharon, at the wrong side up, and we secure that to our quilt-as-you-go substrate right mm -hmm. here, smooth that over. And the process just simply repeats. This one, we use the, the it's got a, starts out with a square and we love this, believe in the magic, love, peace, joy. We just thought that looked so nice, you know, kind of centered here. And then we start out by, we start out by cutting squares like this. We cut a square and then those mm -hmm. are actually cut in half for half square triangles. And that becomes your piece two and three and then again, four and five. And that's how that center area got pieced. And then of course we add the musical notes on here and um, finished off with four more triangles. So we'd be quilt as you go, all uh, sewing in a quarter inch, and then you'd be adding your corners on like that. We've got that sewn up for you already so that you can see what it looks like. So this is my finished, um, back side of my bag. And then this is the lining side of the bag. So this is the part you're going to see through with the plastic. Uh -huh. And then we did a little top section, which was just, we just quilted these two pieces of fabric together. And we just quilt in a line all uh -huh. the way down here. You can use painter's tape, or you can use just a ruler and a marking pen to sew a straight line. Uh -huh. And then the same process again here, is you're gonna connect this quilted top with the plastic and in between that is your zippity do done. So the casing opens up and you put the, uh, the little top of the project in here. Sew mm -hmm. along the edge and you do the same with the bottom. And that, that looks like this when you're done. So it's all finished. And then we even did some musical notes along here. If you wanted mm -hmm. to add that to the zipper, you could. That would look mm -hmm. like that. And then again, we're simply putting wrong sides together. So we have the plastic side with the lining side. And we purposely did this one so that this top section matched this because we thought that looked nice. And then of course you would bind. And then when you turn over to this side, it would be your piece side. Very nice. And that looks like this. That's great. So the project bags come two per kit. You get both the 18 inch and you get the 16 inch. So it's a it's a nice, probably you can make one in about an hour, an hour and a half. Right. Um, perfect yeah. evening project. Exactly. It'd be so, great for teacher's gifts too. And I just, just to showcase, this is one of the other colors of zipper. This is the tan. Oh, but you nice. know, we really have been focusing on all things Christmas. But mm -hmm. these are these are bags that you could really make out of any kind of fabric, of course. Right. Um, whatever, whatever you love to see. So that is our lovely projects for today. And we just can't tell you how much we love that collection of fabrics and what a what a fun challenge it was to say, what are we going to make out of these and what goes where? And we just love, love working with with you guys. And um, I think we're a good team, don't you? Yes, I agree. So uh, 
Jill, thank you for you to you and your team for all the projects that you've developed this week. We love how you've showcased uh, Tim Holtz in this particular uh, episode, and we hope that we have inspired everybody. Um, oh, there's no camera on right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Let me see. Is there a camera on now? It's just Jill. Oh, it's just Jill. Well, that's okay, Jill. <laughs> Well, Jill. Jill just keeps smiling. I, well, well, actually, I have some good news. We're going to do some giveaways. So um, we have some project bags because these are brand new. So we have some project bags to give away and some tree skirts and some uh, stockings. So we would love to know what you are going to put in your project bags. So let us know what your creative ideas are for your project bags. And um, we'd love to know, and we'll be doing a drawing and sending those out to you. Yes, that sounds great. Thank you, Jill. So there'll be a total of what, four giveaways that we'll do? Yes, we will so um, there'll be two packs of project bags. So each of those people will get two because they come in a twin pack. Or, or okay. two pack. And then we'll do two of the stockings plus the tree skirt for another two people. So It'll, it'll be nice to get going on our Christmas projects. It's still July. It's still Christmas. That's right. July. That's right. It's time to get going. I've been thinking about Christmas. So it is not just because we're shipping the fabric, but because I can't believe it's almost August. I know. <laughs> and I'm thinking Christmas is coming. The holidays are coming. So um, I just thank you again. Uh, we appreciate the, the giveaways. And we will team that with some of Tim Holtz fabrics to send to the four lucky winners. And the question is, what would you put in your project bag? How would you use that project bag, whether you use it Christmas or otherwise? We'd love to know. And please keep in mind that this uh, collection that Jill has just showcased in all these beautiful June Taylor projects is a free spirit. Tim Holtz is free spirit fabrics. And this is shipping to stores now. You can go to your local quilt shop and you can get this fabric. And it's a total of 16 designs that are shipping. And you, it, they showed us many of the beautiful fabrics and how beautifully they all team together. So thank you again, Jill. You and your team did a great job showcasing it and making everybody feel so inspired by both the projects and the fabrics. So that's always great. And what I really love about these projects is that, you know, if someone's a new sewer and they want to expand upon what they're working on. I mean, this is a great uh, bridge to get you to other places. So it is. And um, we have a lot of videos on how to make these on our website. So if you ever get stuck, you can go over to some of the videos and watch the process. But it's pretty much the same every time as putting a backing on and sewing by number. And it's a really easy way for a beginner to learn. Or maybe you're, you know, an advanced sewer or quilter and you just need a small project. Um, or you want need to get something done fast for a gift. I hope that I, I hope we've inspired you to to pick up one of these projects and some of that great fabric. You you have done both today, so thank you for that very much. So we thank everybody. Cannot see me, Jill. They still only see you. And <laughs> thank you very much, and thank you for being patient with uh, us today in terms of the spotlight video. And uh, we thank everyone for coming today. We thank Jill and her team. And if you have any questions on anything that you've seen today, if it's Free Spirit, it's freespiritfabrics.com or it's junetaylor.com if you have any future questions for either um, of the items that you've seen today. So thank you, Jill and your team. And thank you to everyone who has watched today. Please join us next week. We will be here next week, hopefully with the spotlight video working with Kay Facet and Brandon Mabley. So we have more exciting things coming in the future. And again, thank you for stopping in. We're happy to have everyone. So have a great day. Thank you, Jill. Bye.